Yesterday, Missouri State Senator Maria Chappelle Nadal was censured by her fellow state senators for a Facebook post in which she expressed hope for President Donald Trump's assassination. The censure vote was nearly unanimous, 28 to 2. But Chappelle Nadal was not kicked out of the legislature President as some had called for. She has since, since twice apologized for the post. Uh, of course, uh, this is, uh, go ahead and play back. This is what her apology, go ahead. Apologize to my colleagues in the Missouri legislature for the mistake that I made. And I made a mistake, and I'm owning up to it. And I am not ever going to make a mistake like that again. And I have learned my lesson. My judge and my jury is my Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, joining us right now from her home district, University City, Missouri, is State Senator Maria Chappelle Nadal. Uh, Senator, the Senate took this action. Uh, the House, though, um, has not moved against one of their colleagues. First and foremost, let's talk about uh, the, the post. When you made this post, um, what was going through your mind when you typed those words? Well, we were going through the anniversary of Ferguson and the shooting of Mike Brown. And one of the things that I did was always look at the anxiety level of people who are in my district. And there's a lot of trauma that has been experienced. And so when we were going through that time period, um, you know, I saw an increase in anxiety. And after we started looking at the visuals in Charlottesville, um, that anxiety heightened. Uh, to a level that triggered a lot of trauma among people who had been on the streets in Ferguson. And the third straw was when uh, the president basically said that there are good white supremacists. At that point in time, I saw a huge um, cry from people who are in the St. Louis area who felt who were triggered with PTSD. Um, and I saw that it was causing trauma. The night before, I put up a post saying that, uh, th that the president was causing trauma and nightmares among people. The next morning, I woke up from a nightmare myself. Um, and that's when I put that up there. I am no different than the people that I represent. I was, um, you know, as I said, I made a mistake, but, um, you know, I was referring to the trauma that is real that our legislators have refused to deal with since the murder of Michael Brown. Well, Senator, you are different. You are an elected official. You are different from the people who you represent. People expect elected officials to have a higher standard. Uh, and also, when you talk about the trauma people experienced, uh, the last American president assassinated was John F. Kennedy, and that put America into a, a period of trauma uh, that, uh, that it had not seen uh, for any number of years. And I, I, again, I, I understand people's frustration. I understand people's anger, but to literally type I hope the president is assassinated. That goes to a totally different level. Yes, and you know what? It does. And as I said multiple times, it was inexcusable. Um, and also when I looked up the number of people who threatened Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton, uh, they were all white males who asked for the same thing and nothing ever happened to them. That's still no excuse. I've owned up to the mistake that I've made and I'm moving on to deal with the issues that are important to the district. Let me ask you this question. If a white elected official from Missouri, one of your colleagues, had posted a comment they hoped President Barack Obama would be assassinated, would you have called for their resignation? You know what, that didn't happen, but I can tell you in this situation, um, there were senators who confided in me that they did hope that. They just never said it verbally. They told me that. Um, and you, you, you're, say, you're saying fellow Missouri state senators told you personally in they had hoped that President Obama had been assassinated. In, in this situation, when we were dealing with how to deal with um, my situation, um, there are others who, who shared with me their frustration and their anger with Obama. And um, they said, Maria, you know, I thought the same thing about Obama, but I never said it. 
and they were they were sharing the difference between what I put on my personal Facebook page and what they were thinking behind the scenes. So I just want to I just want to be clear. So you're saying that white colleagues of yours, fellow Missouri state senators, when you were talking with them offline, uh, said to you that they had similar feelings about President Barack Obama, a hope that he was assassinated, but they never said it publicly like you did. Yes. And we're talking, what, half a dozen people, a handful? Uh, I'm, I'm just curious, because that, that, that's... No, that it, no, it was one person, um, and they confided in me about this situation. And we, we deal with the, the difference between what we saw on the streets in Charlottesville and what we experienced in St. Louis and Missouri. We deal with covert racism. And so it's exemplified in policy all the time. You may not say it out loud. They may not say it out loud, but it's reflected in the policies that are outright racist. The other thing that I would add um, as, as a note for your audience is the NAACP has already made it a travel advisory for African Americans who come into the state of Missouri. There are people who have died in jails in rural Missouri because of the color of their skin. So we deal with this every single day. Um, that's not to say that what I did was right because it was not, it was wrong. And any time that someone would, would say something like that, of course I would be outraged about that. Um, I did not know about Richard Burr and his threat to the president and Hillary Clinton. I did not know about Nugent prior to this situation, and I did not know about U.S. Senator Purdue, who also made threats to leadership in our federal government. Do you believe, so that, do you believe that the Missouri State, State House should censure uh, Representative Warren Love, who recently called for the lynching of those who vandalized a Confederate statue in Springfield, Missouri? Absolutely. In fact, we listened to the debate yesterday, and even the minority party, there are about three sentences um, about a future censorship, but nothing happened to him. Um, and from the get-go, it was the determination of the lieutenant governor to punish me more uh, than the state representative that called for a lynching of someone who dam damaged a Confederate statue. So there are inequities that we deal with all the time. Um, what is next? Because although this is a censure, you were not, ex uh, you were not expelled, uh, they could take future action against you. Are you concerned that that could very well uh, t still take place? Well, I'm very lucky to be represented by the ACLU here in St. Louis, and there's some legalities. Um, I'm very glad that legally that the last a couple of sentences were added into the the resolution um, because it does cite that they want to punish me for something, even though it was morally wrong and politically wrong, uh, it's still protected. You can go back to a Georgia case um, from 1965 where um, we had someone who we all know um, who said some things about the president at the time and was protected uh, by the First Amendment. So um, if mm. there are efforts to silence me in the future, um, you know, we'll deal with that in court. Has this, though, caused you to be far more careful when it comes to what you say on social media? Um, yeah, absolutely. And you know what? I'm going to keep talking about trauma. As long as the representative talks about cowboyisms, um, I'm going to keep talking about trauma in the African American community. What's really interesting is um, how these two things, which obviously offend a lot of people, um, you know, they're, the way in which it's dealt with uh, is, is not equal. And so I am going to continue to talk about trauma. I'm going to continue to talk about Ferguson. And realistically, let's just be clear. White people don't like to talk about black people issues in the state of Missouri, okay? And so anytime you open your mouth and you say anything that's not even half of what I said or a quarter of what I said, they're going to be offended because they see themselves as not racist. I am someone who fights for African Americans and their needs and other people of color, and I'm going to continue to do that 
and me not being in the Missouri Senate would not only disenfranchise people who rely on me on the major issues that are going on in our state, no one else would be doing that. Um, so I don't want to disenfranchise them. And I got to say, even with all the negative publicity, it's the weirdest thing in the world. I can't go to the grocery store and not be stopped for an hour um, with people thanking me for standing up for their rights. All right. Missouri State Senator Maria Chappelle and Dahl, we appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Thank you. All right. I want to go to our panel here, A. Scott Bolden, legal analyst and chairman of the National Bar Association PAC, Sue Zodak, founding CEO of the Zodak Agency, Rashad Robinson, executive director of Color of Change. Rashad, I'll start with you. Uh, they censured her. Should she have been expelled for this comment? Um, I think that the voters who voted her and elector will have to make a decision the next election cycle about whether or not they want to keep her a representative, and that's part of how democracy works. There's also the potential if they wanted to recall her for this, they could recall her. Um, a Republican led by a, a party that leads the, uh, the other party leading representatives from other parties deciding whether or not she should be in or out of um, of the Senate kind of uh, speaks against people's uh, one person, one vote, and what's would your, disenfranchise. What's your thoughts, though, about posting that kind of comment, even though it was immediately taken down? Oh, no, there's no, I'm not here to defend the comment that, and I, and I, and I know Maria. I've spent a lot of time on the ground in Ferguson. Um, I know her. Um, we are Facebook friends. Um, and so, um, and so, and she wasn't defending her comments either. Um, the question here is, is um, should um, other representatives be able to decide who represents the black community in that community and decides who their representative should be? Now, the voters in that community should decide who's best to take their um, their ideas, their passions, their hopes to Got the it. Missouri J State Senate, and that's what they'll do next election cycle. Well, but, but the rules don't. Well, the <laughs> rules to allow for this. Same thing in Congress. Um, uh, same thing happened when, um, of course, uh, because of ethical issues, Congressman Charlie Rangel was rebuked and censured, if you will, uh, by his colleagues. And so we, so, so there, Censorship there are. Censorship is different than removing. Oh, no, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. So. Well. I, I disagree with the point that she wasn't trying to defend it. I think she is, in a way, trying to defend it, saying, I woke up with a nightmare, people are under trauma. I mean, to associate that with saying that that's what led me to say that I think someone should be murdered, I think is, is inappropriate, and she really should apologize for connecting those two things you know yeah I'm not denying that she you know she has nightmares people you know are under trauma but to say this is what led me you know the environment led me to feel so that when she asked, saying so when, that so, so when someone asked her why did you post it what is she supposed to I mean she was doing an interview where she was asked a direct question about why did you post it she had to answer no, that that's question her answer. And so that was her answer I'm so saying she was but then she, she, she should apologize yeah. for that in my you opinion know, you know Roland there's, there's okay no 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 oh, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Hello. First of all, she she, she apologized. She, she apologized for the comment previously. She also just did it on the show. Yeah. Right. But I but I want no no follow me here. The reason I asked the question, I got somebody who's like, Roland, why are you grilling her? Because it's called asking questions. Yeah. And that was the point. Yeah. I wanted to know what led to you posting that. You you don't just wake up and post, hey, it's much assassinate the president. I want to understand what was behind that. And so to anybody out there talking about why you're grilling her, because she should be grilled, be asked those questions, uh, because we have these kind of conversations here. And if a white politician did the exact same thing, I'll be asking the same questions. No, I, I agree with you. That that I'm just saying that that answer to me was troubling. Is what I'm saying. I don't think that the know, answer of how she dis, she dis yes. describing what led to it. Yes, that's it troubling. Okay. A question I know, she was asked. but it's yeah. troubling to me that we have elected officials that say, "Well, due to the trauma around me, I'm going to suggest murder." You know. Well. well she was explaining why she said what she said. I think she's apologized. Yes. And I gotta tell you, there's a broader issue, and she's been sincere, and she continues to apologize. But there's a broader issue here. On the whole issue of the hard left and hard right and, and personal attacks or, or physical violence on our elected officials uh, generally has gone way too far. But the bigger problem is the inequity of what our response is. So for example, on Huffington Post, you saw, I saw a, a post that 
that talked about all the attacks on Barack Obama. He was compared to Hitler. He was called a fascist. Yes, he was a called a jihadist. Right. He was called all these yep. things. And there was no outrage from the GOP or moderates or whomever uh, in regard to those type of attacks, mostly on, on another network. And yet... Oh, dude, um, you can say Fox News. Okay, Fox and News. In, 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 that, in that clip or, I saw this morning, there also was right. some clips on, on uh, some, uh, some other networks as well. But and go yeah, ahead. Most of them on Fox News. And what have you. And yet... When 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 uh, when when Donald Trump gets attacked, uh, white America is so offended at that, and and it's because of their white privilege that somehow they suggest that an attack on Donald Trump uh, is should not be tolerated, okay. but multiple attacks on Barack Obama should. So if you're going to do these physical attacks or well, suggest that, then it ought to all be censored, and we ought to all just get away from it. But it can't be uneven in our criticism, which we're seeing right now. Which is also, when we discussed this yesterday, I said the exact same thing in terms of uh, as an African American. Mm -hmm. I am going to hold folks to a standard. Yep. Not a white standard, right. not a black standard, not a Democratic standard, not a Republican standard a standard as simple as that days on tv one i will never lie to you oh my god roland martin he doesn't want to talk to us he wants to ignore us uncensored no. hell no. no that ain't gonna cut it boo unapologetic no no that, that is fundamentally false you are wrong unfiltered he wants an america where we all look alike he ain't talking about black people unrelenting you better go work out because you got to fight on your hands. News One Now with Roland Martin, weekdays at 7 a.m. on TV One.